to another Coach Dave Academy Lab Guide with myself, Kieran Harrison. Uh, once again, we're in the BMW M4 GT3. Uh, this week is week seven in the, for the IMSA iRacing Series, and we're at Sebring International. Uh, so without further ado, let's just get straight into it. So there we are, that was the full speed lap of Sebring in the BMW GT3. Uh, I'm now on the replay at the start finish line about to start the lap so I can run you through everything I'm doing as we do the lap of Sebring. So here we're coming down the pit straight. Um, this one's a bit of a tricky one to explain because personally for me, uh, my eyes are focused on the apex over there and I just I'm just judging how far away it is as to my breaking point, but looking at my lap, you can use this kink in the wall here. Um, you want to be as close to this wall, obviously, as you, you can, um, but I'm basically breaking and turning in at this kink in the wall you can see there. So there you go. I'm just starting to break there, and the kink's here. So if you prefer to use that as a reference, then by all means. Um, but for me, it's one of them where there's not a clear reference that I like, so I just like to judge it off the proximity to the corner. Um, the important thing here is just to get as close to this wall as you can without hitting it, obviously, because I can break your front steering if you tap it with the front corner. Um, and it, you've got to be quite patient because it's it's longer than it seems because there's a wall in the way you can't see the exit yet. Um, you've got to be quite patient and you can't get away with running on the, the sandy, gravelly bit on the outside here like you used to. Uh, it just costs you too much speed now, so it's faster to keep two all four wheels on the track, as it should be. Um, but just be nice and patient so you can use all the track, but make sure you don't dip your wheels over there uh, if you want to carry the most speed possible. Then I'm moving slightly to the left here. You don't need to go far. Um, it's just to open up this little kink so that I can turn in and be going straight along the edge of the track as I start to brake. So the three cones is our reference. Um... So basically, I'm timing it so that the car becomes straight pretty much exactly as I start braking. So you can see, I'm starting to brake, and I've got the wheel straight. Um, but this one's just down two gears. It's a relatively early turn-in, because the, the curb... I feel like the corner starts early and it tightens later. Um, so it's going to be quite deceiving, and the, the grip's all on the inside, so you've got to try and stay close to this curb. I don't like to hit this inside curb. Um, Certainly not in a GT3, I find it just unsettles the car a bit too much and affects your traction coming out. Um, but it's different for this curb because it, it's more important to sacrifice a bit of traction. As you can see, I lift a little bit uh, just to keep traction over the curb. It's more important to 
open up the following corner than it is to maintain traction, given that the proximity to the following corner as you go through the kink. Um, but that, yeah, then as we get off the curb, we're trying to get as far to the right as we can to open up the following left. Um, I believe, actually, I'm possibly getting up to third gear in the middle of this. No, I actually stay in second. So I go down to second for this part, stay in second all the way through, and then braking, staying in second for this following part. And this one, again, I don't like to hit the inside curb. You want to take a nice late apex because this comes out onto a, a bit of a straight. Um, and again, make sure not to run wide. You can use all the curb. It's a bit more aggressive early on, but it doesn't it doesn't affect your traction in this car, so use it all if you need to. Then just stay into the right through this gentle curve uh, before we fade across the left for the hairpin. Again, we're looking at the cones. Uh, the four cones this time is my reference. As you can see, I'm pretty much in line. The front's in line with the cones as I'm starting to brake. Uh, all the way down to first for this one. Um, and the important thing here is you've really got to take a nice late apex because, as you can see, the track comes back in on itself on the exit. Um, now, in previous versions of iRacing, when the, the grass and gravel didn't slow you down too much, it was often quick to just run two wheels in this, which allowed you to take the corner as wider, but nowadays that would slow you down too much, and in, in this sort of car it would affect your traction too much anyway, so we just want to try and get a nice late apex so we can get the car rotated early, and then we can get on the power hard, because the car's travelling more in a straight line as we get onto the exit. You see I'm nearly flat out here and the steering wheel's almost straight just as we come out. Um, yeah, then just along this curvy straight, moving over to the left-hand side for the following corner. I'm looking at these four cones again, but this time I'm braking slightly after, like just as the middle of the car is going past it. You can see there, just the back of the car. I'm starting to brake there just as it's about in line with the middle of the car. So obviously from your perspective in the car, it feels like you've already gone past it as you start to brake. But it's it's distinctly before the next cones, was why I mentioned those cones. Um, this one, down to second gear again. Again, this is another one of those curbs I don't really like to take. I get a little tiny bit of it here, which is fine. Um, it's all about the traction on the exit, so you don't want that extra bouncing uh, if you were to take the curb. So then we don't run quite all the way out because we need to open up the next part just a little bit. It's it's flat out, but if you came too wide, you would end up running wide through the following bit. Um, as you can see here, I don't take that curb in this car. Um, and then we're trying to get back close to this curb. You can get all the way up to it, that would help. Um, but it's all like a game of trade-offs, really. So if you, if you sacrificed a bit more corner in this right-hander, you would open up the left more and you would have a tight line through the left so you gain some of the time back. Um, so it's just about finding that optimal balance of carrying corner speed versus not running too wide in the following part. Uh, this sort of line's okay, you can run wider, you can run tighter. Just experiment a bit with it to see what works best for you. Um, through this kink, I'm not getting a, a, uh, into this curb because I'm lo already looking at these cones, which is my reference for the following braking zone, which is a right-hander. So I'm staying a bit to the left, just so it's easier to get across the left-hand side. You can see I've already started braking. Just before these three cones, from, from on board it feels like it's pretty much in line with the cones. Like I'm still coming off the throttle here. Um, just down two gears here, and I find with this one, it's another one where it's quite beneficial to turn in early. Um, if you try and turn in too late, I find there's just not enough grip out, out wide, so even though you would think it might help you get a better exit, if the track doesn't give you the grip when you do that, it's not worth it. So you can see here, I turn in quite early. I just leave a little bit of room to the ideal apex. Again, it's another one where you don't want to hit this inside curb because the traction is too important on the exit. So you could take a little bit more here than I do. But then, again, the important thing is to not run wide onto this gravel uh, and try and maximise the traction as best as you can. So I'm a little bit cautious coming back onto the throttle here, just picking it up gently, and then once I'm confident, then we're going flat out. Um, then flying up through this bit, I don't cut this curb as much as I used to, it's quite bumpy now, so I was just taking a little bit. Um, this one you can take all the way up to this sort of difference in the grey tarmac, uh, so I just cut that off a little bit, makes it easier to get across to the left for the following corner. Again, we're looking at the cones, this first cone marker, the three cones, is my reference. I'm braking just about as the car gets up to it. Just before the cones is when I start braking. Down from fifth to third for this one. Um, and in this car I like to put two wheels over the inside of this part just a little bit. Don't go too much otherwise when 
when it comes back over the curb, uh, it'll jump the car too much, and then you'll end up running out wide. So you can see, because I didn't come back across at that sharp of an angle, it goes over reasonably smoothly. Um, in this car, I don't find you can take this... You can't dip your wheels behind this curb anymore. It was, it was causing the middle of the car to bottom out on the curb, and then it was just ruining the run, and I was washing out wider anyway. Um, so I, I prefer to open it up a little bit through the right, then as we come through, we take as much curb as possible and then just cut across it right at the very end. Um, that just, all of this is free track limits. This is all fine. Just helps you to open up this following part. So basically, as soon as we cross over that curb, we're then back onto the brakes, staying in third and turning in for the following part. This one, I again, like to put two wheels over the inside of the curb. Um, you can take actually a little bit more than this, uh, or you can take none, it's up to you. For the purposes of widening the corner, it's it's usually beneficial to take two wheels behind the curb. Um, and then as long as you come back over the curb reasonably smoothly, as I do here, it's quite easy to get the traction. Just pay attention to my throttle trace here. As I'm going over the curbs, I'm being careful. And then once I'm down, harder on the power, and then flat out towards the exit. Make sure you don't run wide, because if you get two wheels on the grass here, it can be quite hard to get it back on the track before the curb ends. And it's... A definite off track if you chop this last bit off uh, with the grass if you come off the curb too late. Um, so then we've just got this back straight before the final corner. The final corner is a bit of a weird one, um, certainly in a car with, with a lot of downforce. You're basically braking and turning in at the same time. So as I get to this two cone marker, um, that's pretty much my turn in point. You can see I've just started to turn in, so I'm turning in before I start braking. And then just as we get in line with this one cone, I'm starting to break. And to me, that feels more like like my per perception of that when I'm driving is that I turn in and brake at the same time, but looking at the replay, I turn in and then I brake. It's obviously at high speed, so it's not much of a difference, but yeah, it just helps to get the car turned in a little bit early uh, and then start the braking. And this is such a wide corner, there's a whole variety of lines here. Some people like to get right up to this wall and hold it tighter, but I like to let the car wash out a little bit more. Down to third gear. You can use second. I was using that for some laps, but um, this car has enough grip. Certainly in these conditions, I think it's 24 degree track temperature. Uh, it has enough grip to hold it in third and keep the revs up. So I was finding it easier to keep it in third for the exit, especially over all the bumps. And then you want to get back. This is It's a quite unique corner where I don't find it's that important to get right to this wall. And I think it's because it's a bit more bumpy on the inside. So you've... You find you bounce out anyway, even if you get right into the apex. So I'm just a little bit off it here, but I'm on the power nice and early, so we carry loads of corner speed. Uh, use all of the exit. This used to be grass, but now that it's all tarmac, you can just use it. Um, but as I say, it's worth, worth a mention that you can turn in earlier, hold it tighter, and then have a tighter exit, and it works out, it works out similar. Um, it's just how I like to do it. But yeah, then to finish the lap, we've just got a short run to the start-finish line. And that completes the lap. There we are, that was the, the complete lap guide in the BMW M4 GT3 for week 7 of the IMSA I Racing Series. Um, as you can see, it was at Sebring. Um, and I think the key thing with this car-track combination, uh, or at least one of the main key things, is to try and avoid those chunky inside curbs, uh, certainly in the slow corners. Uh, where, you, where you need to maximize your exit. I think it's a bit of a BMW thing where it's quite stiff over the curb, so it really affects your exit if you if you can't get the traction because you go over the curbs. So just try to pay attention to that and see if you can focus on your exits as best you can. Um, but yeah, be sure to check out the, the rest of the YouTube channel for all the other lap guides we offer here at Coach Dave. Um, of course, we have our setup subscription and other services, so please be sure to check out the website or the Discord channel for everything you might need to know uh, about what we offer. But for now, that's all from me, so I will see you in the next one.